on the edges of a great river in the middle of a cretaceous rainforest a large herd of a hundred and fifty dinosaurs cautiously drinks together made up of both tiny carnivores and larger plant-eating ornithopods the herbivores didn't have anything to fear from the small predators and each species more or less ignored each other as they drank and kept their eyes open for any predators as the herd moved along the shore the large numbers were no defence against what was watching them through the trees watching his prey from the undergrowth was the most ferocious predator in these lands an ostola venator having scanned the herd he had picked out his targets and was ready to attack with a burst of speed the predator launched himself out from behind the trees and straight for the mixed herd the first individuals that saw him sounded the alarm and ran and the seconds later pandemonium ensued far from an orderly retreat the riverside was a mess of terrified and scampering dinosaurs running and bolting in every direction many of them hadn't even seen what was attacking them nor where it was coming from some made it back to the forest but the majority ran in all directions colliding with each other and making confused split-second turns to try and escape with the tiny carnivores dashing between the legs of the larger herbivores this was exactly what the attacker wanted as he sprinted up to the chaos unfolding on the shore the closest herd members all turned away and fled but they were too packed together and couldn't get away in the panic one of the small predators was crushed under the larger hunter's foot but he had a much bigger target in mind as he closed in on his target he lashed out with his forearms digging his massive claws into the smaller dinosaur's hide the ornithopods squealed in pain and slid along the mud seeing the other two species of his herd get further away from him the australovenator then smacked the herbivore to the ground with his head before the prey could get up he pinned it to the ground with his right foot and then drove his claws into its back and stomach this wasn't enough to finish the hunt however as the doomed prey cried out in pain for help that would never come the attacker closed his jaws around the helpless animal's neck and finished the job with a loud snap its hunt now successful the australovenator lifted his head and surveyed the area dozens of smaller dinosaurs were still running either up into the forest or down the length of the river and a loud flock of birds could be heard having been startled by the stampede the successful predator threw his head up and let out an ear-piercing roar into the air a warning to anything within the area not to approach his kill with that he began to gorge himself he had been on the edge of starvation before this kill and would eat nearly every part of it possibly leaving only the skeleton the southern hunter had no idea that the tracks left behind him in the wake of the stampede would soon be fossilized and left undisturbed for tens of millions of years hello everyone and welcome back to the show today we will be examining australia's own australovenenta but before we get to the facts of this creature, did you know that the events that I based the previous story on actually happened? This small snapshot in time is the only known instance of a dinosaur stampede preserved by fossilized footprints. Found in Queensland, Australia at Lake Quarry, the site shows the footprints left behind by the dinosaurs as they ran for their lives. And though it's not confirmed that Australovenator was the predator on the scene, most evidence seems to support that he was indeed the instigator. So, what was Australovenator? Well, it was a medium-sized theropod from the mid-Cretaceous period that lived 95 million years ago in what is now Eastern Australia. First discovered in 2009, the skeleton contained the legs, arms, and some of the ribs and parts of the lower jaw, and to this date is the only known specimen of the species. However, these remains are enough for scientists to estimate that the creature would have been about 2 metres tall, 6 metres long, and weighed between 500 and 1,000 kilos. For a theropod, it had large arms and shockingly large claws. This, along with the fact that its jaws weren't particularly strong, leads scientists to believe that it used its arms more in hunting and securing prey, tearing at them, eviscerating them, or restraining them before finishing them off with a final bite. It also had far more movement and flexibility in its arms and fingers than any other theropod dinosaur in history. On top of that, it would have been fast, being called the cheater of its time, creating a frightening combination of size, speed, and deadly weapons. 
Little is known about Australian dinosaurs and their surrounding environments, but Australovenator would have shared its environment with other species such as Isophordia, a species of crocodile, Australotitan, Winternotitan, Savannosaurus, various ornithopods, and an unnamed ankylosaur, as well as many other creatures including pterosaurs, lungfish, and small mammals. Until larger predators are confirmed in Australia, Australovenator may have been the largest predator on the continent at the time, hunting small or medium-sized prey wherever it lived. Though no evidence of pack hunting exists, if they did hunt in packs together, they may have been able to take down some of the larger game that they lived alongside. Though I don't think any carnivore could have possibly taken down a grown Australotitan. Australovenator would have been a truly incredible and frightening sight to have seen alive boasting some of the most intimidating claws of any animal in existence, showing that carnivorous dinosaurs weren't all about the teeth. Fascinatingly, the skeleton was discovered entwined with the skeleton of a titanosaur, one that could have been over 15 metres long. Did they die in a fight to the death, or was this just a coincidence that they were buried together? Either way, the surprises and uniqueness of this species never seem to end, and that's why it's one of my favourite dinosaurs. So, what do you think of Australovanto? Is it the Freddy Krueger of the Cretaceous, or do you think some other predators are more exciting? Let me know what lesser known species you'd like me to cover in a future episode. Until next time.